From childhood's hour I have not been, as others were I have not seen, as others saw I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source I have not taken, my sorrow I could not awaken. My heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still. From the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form when the rest of heaven was blue of a demon in my view. Edgar Allan Poe's Alone Hello everybody, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. The second part of a quick look I've never done before. I've been told this game is like really awesome and has a really cool twist or whatever. And uh, I got a couple of requests to actually finish the game because it's apparently not too, not too long. So uh, unfortunately when I do quick looks, very rarely do I actually save the game because you know it's just a one-off thing. I'll very rarely come back to the game unless I really enjoy it. And I didn't save the game. So I had to replay all this, so, um, hopefully the choices, I mean, I tried to pick the same choices I did last time, so hopefully that, uh, didn't change things too badly. I don't think it did, because it seemed like I got all the same, same scenes, but, uh, so we're going to write more poems for tomorrow. It's working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through. If it's for the sake of the club, I must do it. And impressing Monica. What, Monica? No. No, not Monica. I didn't pick Monica at all. Maybe it's just pressing the club president. I have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, come on. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well. Ah. How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, so you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Gosh, you girls, I tell you. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was facing out. <laughs> no wonder. Um, I was thinking of something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here, you know. <laughs> we walk home with Sayori every day. Or most, not every day, mo most, most days. Of course we were walking with Yuri. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does this all that make me, my heart pound? Well, I mean, uh, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so. Isn't she so beautiful and smart? Oh, that has nothing to do with what I just said. Haha, <laughs> you admitted it. God. Uh, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. I never can. Sorry. Everyone is different. 
Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off. And I'm left feeling a little awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take it out away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Poem time, poem time. Okay, captive, ooh, I like that one. Um, wrath, um, infinite. I mean, we're hitting all the notes, aren't we? Um, what about calm? Tragedy, everyone loves a good tragedy. Intellectual, climax. Hmm. After image, hmm. essence. Broken. Cry. She's sad. She's like, no, you're not picking me. Okay, we'll get one of you. Crimson. Unstable. Raindrops. A tone. Mm. Ambient. Misery. Existence. Sadness. This is a hell of a poem, let me tell ya. Oh man, I'm the last one here again? What is she doing, I wonder? Oh, don't worry, I just walked in too. Were oh, you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of a determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. That's true. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. We're not talking about our part of the festival. <laughs> but it's a whole day off of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Sound a little bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Sorry, one of my friends is playing Persona 4 and is stuck on a boss. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Monica? Mon? Ica? No, it doesn't make any sense. How does that mean squid? Nah, oh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are, you're right behind her. Didn't see you there. Sayori's so sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. What? Is everything okay? Of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. So, sorry for assuming things. Oh, geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? See where it shows me a big smile. Don't want me to distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. So if they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. Maybe she knows something. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. I see, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? 
In what way do you mean? Oh, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room with Sarah who is idly dragging a rubber racer up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised. I'm not the one asking you, SC. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Oh well, yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem, but... I just want to ask if you know anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about her well-being of my club members, so, you know... Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, SC. Me? No, not me. How on earth did you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anyone else you know. Huh? She's been so much happy ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has always been. <laughs> You're so funny, SC. I know, I'm a riot. We thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you. Well, I didn't think of it that way. <laughs> I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so I'll try not to think about it for now. Ah. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it. But I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her now that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one who's behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do beside wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm always being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. I see you. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. I know it's a little easy for me to do that because, you know, we've conversed a couple times. I stand up from my desk and sit next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Oh, relax. You didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you want to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts. How are you even able to tell what I was thinking then? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. Well, in any case, I guess you were right. Now, I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are st certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah. It's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. But when I asked her about it, she really didn't want to admit it. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Romantic? Huh? So sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. Oh, well, it's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sarah and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, oh, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it too much. I see. 
The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Huh. So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Mm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looks like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. I mean, we're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looked deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. That's a very philosophical, thank you. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri. You're giving me way too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it, yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. God, it's a mess. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Mm, let's do someone different. Let's do Sayori first. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Hmm? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, SC. Sayori. Is there something wrong? Hmm? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. Anything at all. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. That's weird. Let's talk to Natsuki. Yeah, no thanks. You didn't even... Next! Bitch. Hi, SC. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well... Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I was thinking of doing The Raven, is that okay? I really like that one. I'll give it some more thought, though. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem, holding it in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, SC. It's like my third poem, alright? Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needed some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. 
You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. He must really like her. No, that's, uh... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I mean... When you put it that way. I just I feel bad she has a hard time socializing. Makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. I mean, that's no way to live. Besides, the novel wasn't too bad either, you know? <laughs> alright, alright. I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Oh, sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale of, tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost to drift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afoot, and I pick up the gust of wind. I like that one. That one was good. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want you to focus more on everything that went into it and the things that you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Hey Yuri, I see. Your writing has only improved in the last few days. Every poem you show me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. 
heck out of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Yuri smiles sadly. As he... During lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people who you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who put a, always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, I see. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings and all I could do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, SC. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And, and the cupcakes. But mainly friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Gary puts her head in her hands. But this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your palm? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost under the light. Oh, sorry, ghost under the light part too. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility, but I am too late. He steps into the street light. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch its hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Hmm. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just... I don't really know I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems being usually cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. Also, this clearly isn't the poem that Natsuki said she wrote about. Meaning, I'm probably the only one she's showing this to. I, I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri's having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with the words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we can keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back toward me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. 
you can um the poem is once again yuri fails to form a complete sentence you mean i can keep it yuri nods i'd love to again yuri faintly smiles as if she doesn't want me to notice you always you always make me feel nice i know i'm not good with people but i hope that i can return the favor sometime yeah don't worry i think you do a good job yuri finally turns back toward me guess we should move on before monica says something but i'm sure we can talk again later yeah i'm sure we will with that yuri timidly smiles at me and i return to my seat so i can put her poem away okay you three we're all done showing poems right why don't we start figuring out hold on a second is it just me or did you say something strange just now huh something did sound a bit unusual that's right you deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club the catchphrase i don't have a catchphrase jeez why is the mood so weird today look even yuri isn't immune to it Stagnating air is common for shadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she would have just went to pee. Itsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well when home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you to be on lovey-dovey. Uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression come from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so... No, you didn't answer my question. Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself... I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. And sorry, will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, no! That's not it at all! You're the most talented person here, you know? Now Natsuki's pouting too... Jeez, even I can't tell now. I guess I never gave C.R. enough credit. But I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can also be a leader on my own, then I'm going to grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, it just leaves you, I see. The one who is truly useless. I <laughs> don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I'd be really appreciative of that. Ah. That's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah. I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Yes, he tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um... If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. I see you may not like to be around if you only make him be out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for a seated. 
what are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking is it? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to SC to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? Yeah, and I never will. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. SC, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's, it's up to you. Ah, uh, well, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh jeez, who am I going to spend my time with? The hard choices I have to- oh, look at that. Well, that'll probably be most, me most helpful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Itsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying- <sighs> So you'll be helping Yuri then, I see. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Itsuki, will be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone else can tell that Mitsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well. Excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Essie? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why SC picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already had trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if I didn't work perfectly, I can tell if she tried to say something so I would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm gonna say this. You better bet my cupcakes are gonna be the best part of the whole event. Huh. I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um. I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Clumsy me. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then, here you go. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, SC. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, no! You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But 
Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? This is one of those times. I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says it and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety should shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. There's no telling what might happen when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously cannot wait. It's already Sunday. And with that, I'm going to end the video off here, guys. And I'll see you all in the next episode of Doki Doki Glitter Club. Have a good day.